Hi everyone, welcome back to another great interview series. My name is Meher, I'm from Vancouver, BC. And today I have the privilege to interview Matthew Deichler from North Carolina. How are you, Matthew? Doing wonderful, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. So Matthew is the founder of the, the Lamp on the Stand Motivational Ministry, a leading content development leadership and a coaching firm committed to inspiring faith-led transformation. He is also an outspoken mental health advocate with nearly a decade of powerful influence in the mental health community. So Matthew, my first question for you is, since here in Canada, it's the Mental Health Month, uh, which passed last week. So what tips do you have for people, for job seekers, for or everyone, especially during COVID time, we hear that the mental health is increasing. What they can do to have that uh, under control? Yeah, well, I would say within organizations, um, so employers need to be aware of, you know, the, the vulnerability really of their employees in, in this season that we're in. With COVID-19, you've got a lot of people that are living essentially in social isolation. So they may be dealing with things that they've never experienced before in their lives, whether that's anxiety, depression, um, there's a lot of things that come into play. Even addiction becomes a thing um, when you're when you're kind of closed up in your own space for too long. You kind of need that ability to escape, and that's a lot of times when these habits come into play. So I would just say that it's really important for employers right now to be building relationships with their people. Um, and I'm not just talking about you know jumping on a team call every once in a while, but reaching out on an individual basis um, and just allowing for the opportunity for people to you know, have a conversation. If they feel moved to do that, um, don't put individuals in a, a situation where they feel pressured to speak about you know, mental health, but just give them the chance. It's just a casual check-in call. You know, how are you doing? How are things? Um, you know, how are you adapting to like this new environment that we're asking you to work from? And just give them the opportunity to speak if, in fact, you know, they're going through something. I think that's critical. And we spend a lot of times as employees on Zoom calls. Um, you know, everybody's familiar with Zoom fatigue at this point. We've been doing this for, for quite some time. And that's a real thing. And I would just say that, uh, you know, another major stressor in the lives of a lot of workers right now is that micromanagement through Zoom fatigue. A lot of times you see that employers will like to see their people to ensure that they're working since they're in a home office environment. They want to kind of keep tabs on them. And that can be a really stressful thing. I think that employers need to be aware of and just allow their people to have space so that they can be their most productive selves. It doesn't mean that you, you know, totally lose sight of them and you should you know, like I said, be reaching out to them individually and building, building and fostering those relationships with uh, relationships with them, but don't overwhelm them with like calls that, uh, you know, are unnecessary, because I think that just adds another level of stress that people don't need right now. And what about job seekers? Do you think that they should have kind of a routines or structure so that they don't feel that they are lost and every day? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think creating structure is critical because, you know, when you're out of that nine to five environment, you find yourself with a, a fair amount of free time, you know, and you can kind of get consumed pretty quickly in the job search process where, uh, you know, it's an anxiety ridden environment because you're trying to put your best foot forward. Maybe you're, you know, lining up interviews. You feel like you're on the stage essentially at all times. And so I think you need to be deliberate about um, how you define your day and where you spend your time. So creating boundaries, I think, is, is absolutely critical. Just being aware that, um, you know, that vulnerability does exist. And if you don't structure your day appropriately, you can find yourself kind of lost in the midst of all of that chaos. And it, and it can kind of swirl on you and develop into a bit of a cyclone in your life. So I would say that, yeah, start your day early. Start outline your day as you would if you were in, you know, your nine to five job, like create blocks of time to do different things. And they don't all have to be sitting in front of a computer filling out applications, you should yeah. be blocking out time to do things that actually, you know, um, foster kind of your spiritual life, foster your psych, uh, your 
your psyche as well, you know, help to keep you in a position of strength rather than dipping into that um, kind of defensive posture that we can all find ourselves in at times when we're seeking a new position because we feel like uh, we're desperate, we need something now, and we have to try and avoid that at all costs. Yeah, I always tell people asking me from advice, I tell them, have, as you mentioned, have blogs, but also have, let's say, eight to nine, I'm reviewing jobs and then go for a walk and then come back, apply for a few jobs and then take the dog. I know that we cannot meet people now. I usually say go for a coffee or an informational interviews. Maybe, yeah. again, do other stuff, you know, follow companies, uh, maybe watch a YouTube video or see how, how can you can improve yourself or maybe learn a new skill that everyone is doing these days. Those are the things that will help you get kind of a structure and get better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think uh, along the lines of how you kind of stay in that positive mindset, there's a number of different outlets you can access. And I would say, I mean, you know, I'm the Lamp on the Stand motivational ministry. So I'm very spiritual. And I think, you know, um, committing time to that spiritual um, place is very important, you know, whether that's through, you know, reading the word or through prayer or through devotionals, things like that, but just filling your mind with things that are keeping you in a position of strength. And that could be, you know, reading, it could be spending time with, I, I keep my AirPods in a lot of the day. And so I'm listening to a podcast, I'm listening to a sermon, I'm listening to a motivational speaker on YouTube. I'm always keeping something, you know, flowing through my brain throughout the day to ensure that I don't dip into that uh, space of vulnerability and, you know, start the downward spiral. Or just have a gratitude journal. You know, I started doing that for a, for a while now. I have three things I'm grateful. And you can be very specific. I'm today grateful for waking up or healthy, or I'm grateful for having this interview with Matthew, or I'm grateful for something for a friend, for a conversation. You can go very specific for the nature, for, for your pets, for your family members. You, there's a lot of to be grateful these days that other people don't have that also can help your mindset. Wow. Absolutely. I think that's so important. I, I've done weeds and seeds lists before as well. So I like to think that I'm planting the seeds by offering that gratitude and I'm listing out things that I'm thankful for. And it could be as simple as the sun outside my window, you know, yeah. um, my family, it could be more complex and specific things as well. And then I'll write the weed list. And these are things that I want to get rid of. I write the weed list and then I toss it in the trash can. It's a very, you know, moving psychological exercise that really has a, a bigger impact than, than you can imagine. Yeah. Those are great tips, Matthew. Thank you very much. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Matthew a couple of questions and they will be posted on a daily basis. So it will be like a journey with us every day. You can watch all the videos or a few of the videos. And if you like them, please like and share, leave comment, and we're here to help you. So tune in tomorrow for another great question with Matthew.